And uh, at this symphony by Wolfgang Mozart right now, symphony number 28, taught by the London Mozart players, led by Jane Glover. So today, I made uh, speakers for more or less free stuff. Uh, so I found this beside the road for free, but it didn't have any speakers. So today, I took apart this thing, took the speakers out of here, I don't know nothing about electronics, but I know speakers are speakers, I'll probably take this motor, try to use that for something, the rest of it to me is pretty much junk, I, I don't know what nothing is. Sometimes I fancy that I'm going to do stuff with electronics, but... There's so many interesting things, but there's like one absolute thing. <laughs> but anyway, what did uh, what did get me psyched today? I need so I needed something different because I've been studying the uh, first few books of the Bible and it's making me wicked depressed, man. Like all the Moses shit, you know. Now I got my own take on. I got my own take on the Moses shit, but the fact of the matter is, is if you're listening to audio Bibles and like referencing the Bible or whatever, talking about Moses, you're going to be depressed. It's like, it's awful. I mean, it's almost like every fucking sentence is terrible. Not every, but like at least 85% of like... Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is just like, it's just, you just want it to be over. It's like, like I don't like horror movies, you know, sometimes I'll watch them, some are better than others, like Saw, Saw, Saw was good because it's interesting, versus like some of the horseshit horror movies, you know, that are just like, just purely aesthetic, but, anyway, uh, today, I, 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 uh, tore this apart so I could make some speakers, and this is what I, this is what I came up with, I took the speakers out of here, and like, I hooked one up at first, you know, I hooked one up at first just to see if it would work, it was before I put the, it was before I put the thing in its cabinet, but I got it in there, got the speaker hooked up, once I, once I saw that worked, once I saw that worked, then, then I hooked up the other speaker, so these can come out, Queen Anne's Lace, glued these down, they're not totally dry yet, but they're pretty close, so I glued these down, took me a while to find them so they'd fit the magnet just right, so I can put the magnet in there, magnet in there, and these came from a, I buy I buy CBD joints down the road because that's what's available. So I got all these test tubes that got like the CBD joints in them, you know. 
and uh, they got corks on them that are like taped over or whatever but I saved some of the corks and they were just the right they were just the right spacing because what I wanted because well first what I was going to do is make like a parabolic dish and put the uh, I was going to like fashion make I was going to fashion or make a parabolic disc and put the uh, speaker in the in the focal point um, but that would have taken a lot of time so I just took these and this is this is kind of interesting I'll turn this up a little again like so you can hear that so that that amplifies it but what I found was when it's directly equal to this plane like when it's flush with this is when it makes the most sound so I made two and I had two old school uh, 7-Eleven cups and I was like yes I was born in 77 so then I can put that on there fits just right So that's how it sounds with nothing. It's scraggly, but it's because I'm standing next to it. Then I also had this. But then I realized, then I realized after I've, I've, I've had this for like a month or two, I've had this system for like a month or two, and it just dawned on me like 10 minutes ago, or 20 minutes ago, that I could just hook this up to this. And then plug it, plug it in the headphone jack. And 
it sounds way better. And it's like, you know, just a small little speaker. So at the dump today, I got some records. Cause I was like, well I got a record player now, so I'm gonna get some records. <clears throat> record player don't work good, the tape player don't work at all. That was the major disappointment. Cause I got, whoops. <laughs> a Budweiser box full of old mixtapes. I threw away most of my tapes, but those I saved. But yeah, the tape player don't work. But anyway, I got these records. So this one. This one is a, uh, it's like some radio play or something from 1921. It was recorded, in, or it was published in 74. I gotta look more into it, but uh, I just played it for like five seconds and the first, the first few seconds of it were like, new secret energy device or something like that. And I was like, ooh, so that's gonna be a good one. And uh, I got this Simon and Garfunkel. It doesn't play for shit on this record player. I think the needle's fucked up, and I think this record's fucked up, too. So it's like a double whammy. But you can kinda hear it. This one I was excited for. It also kinda reminded me of the movie Hugo. Which, interestingly enough, I bought the day after I posted my last prop Proofacy Protocol video, so you'll have to watch my, my, I think it's Proofacy Protocol 006, I bought the movie Hugo the next day, can't make this shit up, but anyway, uh, yeah, this one don't sound good, it's almost like the needle split in two, like a forked tongue, and it's almost like playing a couple tracks at the same time, but, so that was kind of a bummer, but this was a good find. Uh, it's a Duran Duran it's a Duran Duran album of like a single but it's like on one side it's like it's basically the same song remixed three different ways and like on on this side like the first minute or two sounded cool and then it just sounded kind of like shit and then this side just pretty much totally sounded like shit, shit. but what's super cool about it anyway is that symbol, especially when it's spinning. Because it reminded me of the vegan cross and the heart. Uh, what's the name of the song? I don't want your love. But, um. But to me, it represented the vegan cross because it's a cross, a Coptic cross over the heart and uh it represents don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of knowledge of good and evil is anything with a heart if it's got a heart don't eat it vegan cross man But I'll save playing those for another time. And I guess I'll go back to the old school.
so this is a little bit of a throwback. Well, I need the exercise. Um, yeah, I'm just. Uncircumcised lips, because if you're thinking uncircumcised, you're thinking about the wiener. And if you're thinking about the lips, you're thinking about the feet. You know? And that was the the of the camel toe. You know? So uncircumcised lips don't kind of like represent both, which would be uh, hermaphroditic, androgynous, which would reference to Akhenaten. Right? It's very early Schoenberg. A lot of people um, of who are into dark chocolate bronze, the kind of biblical is, history uh, also and, and talk about like a brief when work for Moses fled Egypt who are Bible thumpers, regular everyday composer. Bible thumpers, like they'll reference who Ramses because in the be Bible it says great Ramses. But we should also recognize the fact that the word Margaret Ramses music didn't mean, it wasn't just like a standalone word. There's a special excitement to an in concert performance before a live audience. You have several opportunities to join the audience on BBR Classical. After Monday evening at 8, it's Carnegie Hall. They could have just put that in there. You know, if that's when the old tradition collapsed upon the New York Philharmonic. Friday at 8, a variety of orchestras on symphony cast. And on Saturday at 1, it's our Saturday matinee opera. At 7, the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, most. and at 8, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Get so what I'm saying about Ramsey's is the same thing with, like, it, it's kind of classical. reverse order, but you can kind of get the picture as, like, Akhenaten, Akhenaten, Akhenaten fled Egypt. At that time, when Akhenaten was around, you know, basically in the 18th dynasty, you're looking at somewhere in that, in the greater Egyptian Empire region, you're looking at two to three she was born people two years after the end of the Civil the War, essay. and so you're looking she at somewhere died between the year that George years. McGovern was Probably. running for president. Um, that's nearly 105 <clears throat> years, if you're counting. Her name, Margaret Lang. And when you look at this is what the Bible says, like they take a Starlight census of all the people, seen. like in the Bible, who could be, like Moses takes the census of all the people who could be in the army, and it's like 600,000 men added together from the Right, so that means you're at about a million and a half people. 
you're somewhere between a million and two million people. So you're basically at like, you know, a rough estimation would be is that like you're about half the population of Egypt. So Moses is fleeing Egypt with half the population of Egypt. Pretty hard to hide. The only time that type of thing could have ever happened would have been Akhenaten. And supposedly, because people are so set on this Ramses gate, because Ramses is mentioned in the Bible, but again, it could be one of those things like when people are like, hey boss, hey boss, right? Like, I go down to the store, and people call me boss, have a good day. All right, boss, have a good day, boss. You know, because people just use boss as like a slang word. Boss, king, pharaoh, Ramses, right? But I'm not the boss. Now, I've been a boss before. call me boss, but then it meant kind of both things, you know, because no one ever thought of me as a boss, trust me, but when you know, people say boss, hey boss, you a boss, but you're not a boss, it's just a thing people say. The Archimedes spiral her takes name, Margaret Lane, generations to Starlight. complete a serpent cussing. She also has the distinction Very of big and uh, important. It's, it, being the, the Archimedes spiral is the reason why golf was a subscriber to Boston Symphony. 91 years. So far as I can tell. And then, thanks very much for listening to my years of work by Arnold Schoenberg. One, very early work. One, one, one root two. Four called root two, one, root three. Night. And uh, it's, it's a root hopeful three, work one, based upon a poem. Root four, in which one, uh, a woman confesses to her to 18, new 18 generations. man that she bears the child of another also, man. Also, an they walk together through a dark has wood. Eighteen feathers. As a man, eighteen says, tail feathers. That's all right. I love it. It spreads its the, the it clerk to its tail feathers like a peacock. It has eighteen feathers. Your classic. The Eastern American wild turkey and Queen Anne's lace. Those two symbols together are the hidden symbols of the last 12,000 years. Solid. But anyway, yeah, just a couple things. I'm still working it out. But I think, because when you take the, the way that people have done the math and the chronologies of like trying to set Moses back in time, he thought, I believe, that the numbers actually put him before Ramses. And I think that it lands him much closer to Akhenaten. And he says, I have unhinged lips. Also, another thing, super huge thing about Moses that probably only people like deep, deep, deep in like the... Because there is, a, I don't know how to say it, like African... There's this African knowledge of like the religions of, of that area. But anyway, Moses' wife was Ethiopian, you know? And like Aaron in the Bible, and, and, uh, and uh, um, um, Aaron, Aaron and Miriam, I think were Moses' siblings, Jewish siblings. But remember, he was raised as an Egyptian. So he was an Egyptian. He was involved with the priest class. Like, he had knowledge. 
sailboards, and real fucking magic. What about it? Real fucking magic. But anyway, his brother and sister were like, we don't like your wife. Why? She was Ethiopian. Now they're all, like in America, they'd be all black. Now again, remember that Moses was adopted in Egypt, all this kind of thing. And that's why, like, Akhenaten was on the the III's kid, but they never put him in any of the pictures. So there's probably a couple reasons for that. One, because he weren't the kid. Two, because They don't like me, I got uncircumcised lips. So he's the androgen, but in his face, uncircumcised lips. He had big lips. He was more black, so to speak, than the typical Egyptian. And his wife was even black. She's Ethiopian. His brother and sister don't like that. Later on, when Joshua, when Joshua takes over shit, One thing in the law that doesn't get brought up a lot is um, one of the things Moses says when he's given the law, most of it I fucking hate, you know? But this is like the one time where women get their fucking, this is the one time when a husband dies, the husband's brother is supposed to take in the wife. It actually says, I think, come in for it. Propagate with her, make kids with her, whatever. But like, at, at the very least, take care. Take care of your brother's wife. If a brother refuses to take care of his dead brother's wife, his sister-in-law, then the woman, and this is one of the only rights that women have, like, directly. The judge, some along these lines, the judge will tell the surviving brother-in-law to take off his shoe, his sandal, his shoes, his sandals. And the widow, his sister-in-law, who spit in his face, and it says that, let it be known that you're one without a sandal, and it means you don't take care of your brother's house. Later on, when Joshua comes before the commander of the Lord, which is probably just Jehovah, because you talk about Elohim, and then you talk about Jehovah, and then you talk about Elohim Jehovah, those are three different things. Hello, in my scenario, Elohim Jehovah would be like. Jehovah with God and the other Elohim. The Elohim would be all the different aspects of God tied up in the God, and then Jehovah by the moment would be just Jehovah. Under. I got more to work out on that, but. Anyway, when Joshua comes, who comes right after Moses? It's like the command, you know, is he comes before, right before attacking Jericho, he comes up to the commander of the Lord's army or God's army or whatever. And uh, commander of the army of God. Cowers. And the commander of the army of God says, take off, take off your shoes, this is holy ground. Right? Take off your sandal. When I looked that up, when I looked that passage up, it referred more to like a different part of Exodus when God's talking to Moses. I think maybe around the burning bush, I can't remember. But like, but more recently than that, 
it says like you don't got to sin. The symbol of not having to sin means you're not taking care of your brother's house. And uh, well, I guess. I guess Moses' wife wasn't Joshua's brother. Or Moses wasn't Joshua's brother. But like there's still kind of a, a strong connection to that. I got more work to do. The other thing that I found out listening to the Bible, I only heard it said in one place is where supposedly Moses was from, um, it mentioned Mo Moses being in Goshen. And like Goshen, Goshen, these days on maps, Goshen is by the ocean. It's up where like the Nile flares out into like all these forks, and like Goshen is up there. There's a part in the Bible where specifically it says Goshen is part of the mountainous region. And like in, well, like Mount Sinai, kind of cross the Red Sea area, like right in that same region in Ethiopia, is like a really mountainous region where the Nile begins. And it talks about Moses climbing Mount Sinai or whatever, or doing this, doing that. And he talks about, we talk about how he drives his staff in the ground, and a river, river starts, and he says it's this river, that river, this river, that, that river. But like, he's Egyptian. Joseph was Egyptian, like the whole lineage was Egyptian, from Joseph up to Moses. So that would have been a long time. So it's like all these dudes who living in Egypt, they're all kinds of different slaves, just not Israel's. When the Israel's fled, when the Israelites fled, Jehovah wasn't even Jehovah yet. Israel wasn't even really Israel yet. It was the tribes. And not to mention, it wasn't even like Egypt as, as like the capital. It was like the greater region, including like Arabia. Arabia was still, I mean, Egyptian. Egypt was the fact. So like, for instance, I live in New Hampshire, right? Yeah, I think it used to be part of me. Revolutionary War, like, my ancestors, well, my, I'm not sure if my ancestors were, yeah, I think my ancestors were kind of in this general region, but like, my ancestors escaped England, but they didn't go anywhere. My ancestors escaped the slavery of England, so to speak, or the, uh, I, I don't mean any disrespect to say it that way, but you know, the oppression of England. My ancestors escaped the oppression of England. <laughs> they didn't go anywhere. Probably most of them didn't fight. They probably read about it in the newspaper. They didn't do anything. Yet, there they were, escaping in. And that's kind of the same way a lot of the shit goes. But anyway, it is super important, I think, people who are into the Word and the Bible, if you're going to look, look into it, look into it. And like, ocean being in the mountain region, also interesting the way that connects with Ganesh. There's a little puzzle. Well, Ganesh. But, uh, yeah, so there's that, and then the other thing. Is that if Moses was, if whatever that whole story was, it's not definitely all wrapped up in Akhenaten. So everybody needs to focus on that shit and breaking that. Moses and Akhenaten breaking all that shit. Moses' wife me, wife's name meant Burr. Oh, why is the Kingsburg sing, man? <laughs> 